Here's a video playing around with somebody who struggles to believe the concept um, and then I gave them examples of how they feel and how that influences the pain. If you're interested in this then watch the video. My name is Drew Coverdale. I help people recover from persistent pain. It doesn't matter where it's come from or how long they've had it, reversal is possible. You may not believe that and lots of people don't believe it. I think it's very hard to consider that their physical pain has any other contributors other than the physical place that they feel it and damage or something yet to be found in that part of the body. Totally understandable. That's how we're biologically wired. When you feel pain, check it out. That's based on uh, the assumption that something happened in the moment to threaten damage or damage has happened. Now when you look for damage and it hasn't happened, or you can't find it, you attribute the pain to old damage. That's a lot, a lot of what people do. But lots of people have that old damage and don't have pain. So it's a correlation, not cause and effect. And then some people can't find anything and the doctors can't find anything. So left with this uncertainty that something physical to be missed by all these brilliant doctors and all these amazing tests, and they're still feeding the pain in that position, uh, not part of the body. So when you're suggesting them, there's another alternate mechanism. It takes a little bit of flexibility psychologically to accept a different belief system. And we love our beliefs. And this gentleman came to see me in clinic and he's known me for a long time, known that I'm a physio and that the treatment we do is predominantly physical to help people. And that does work. There's some context with that, that touch and setting a boundary for that movement and telling someone the healing time from particular injury that's valid for the first three months of any physical trauma but when you're playing with pain that's lasted a lot longer those rules haven't been employed at the time either by the person or the people around them or the circumstances that appeared they just weren't in place so the body's automated the protection but it's using fight flight freeze or fawn so this ongoing pain presents the illusion of ongoing damage to somebody who believes that pain is only coming from damage or could only represent ongoing old damage and that's not true now when you challenge someone the belief they're like no it is true don't you dare tell me something that i believe is wrong well that's just a trauma response really isn't it that's a lack of psychological flexibility but totally understandable we've all held beliefs like that i've held them as a physio patient holds them all the time it's a challenge to plant a seed or suggest to someone toe to toe but we uh, this gentleman came and we had a right laugh now because i know him beyond the physio clinic but sometimes those people are harder to get close to so i was said to him a couple of years ago you've got this pain in your foot he said can you do out for it i said well if you're prepared to come and see me and look at the other things that might be contributing to the pain then maybe i can help you are you open to that he went no i said don't go don't come and see me it's a waste of time stay in the system do what you need to do come to me when it's all finished now he's come to me two years later he's had injections they've offered him a surgical procedure he's of an age where he's very experienced in life and a bit older than me and probably thinks he's a bit wiser and i'm sure he is so my skill set if you like physically doing something if he's already had that and it hasn't worked with mothers might see me in the past, but for this issue he hasn't, and he doesn't think it can be helped with this, we're really on a very low expectation level of what I can do for him. <laughs> now we've been able to help him with physical measures for this pain that he complains of. I know it's only going to be temporary, but it does seem to calm it down. Now it calms his nervous system down, and that's why the pain gets less. I'm not curing this damage that he thinks he's got, because he can't in half an hour. I'm not healing this old injury, because he can't in half an hour, but there's no healing to be done from a tissue perspective. There's a calming mechanism, but if someone doesn't know how to access that themselves, or their life means that they're on the ceiling all the time, chasing around being who they believe they should always be, and pain's there to stop them doing that, then they just keep going through the pain. Now his pain calmed down, so he got curious, he got curious about this connection between emotions and pain. So we played a little game and I didn't tell him I was playing this game because I knew I'd got him settled. But I knew as soon as he goes out to life, the pain comes back. 
because she was puzzled why does it come back when I'm not doing anything because it doesn't fit with the physical pain like that mm. it can just come out of nothing apparently I said okay tell me a time that winds you up and he said oh, someone I work with and asked me to sometimes not do stuff to protect my what part of my body that hurts he says it makes me really angry he clenched his fist like this it makes me really angry and his face represented the emotion I said tell me how your foot feels he said it's starting to hurt I said I said, I said, I can't believe that. I said, well, what have you just seen? You get angry and your foot, your foot hurts. What else has happened? The tissue injury hasn't just come back. Damage hasn't just come back. Your age is the same. Your weight's the same. The weather's the same. Your height's the same. Your genes are the same. Your degeneration, wherever you think it is, is the same. It can't be that because that hasn't changed. But the surge of adrenaline on thinking of a situation that is the past or might happen in the future triggers the pain he said i can't believe it i gave him another example I calm the calm the foot down again I said okay tell me another situation he said oh well my wife has a test checkup for something that she's been ill with so how do you feel he went oh, I'm a bit, uh, you know it's naturally i'm worried i said think of the time you got the letter and you go into the appointment and it's coming up he went yeah okay so hold the thought so you thought you saw him almost go into his mind think about it Oh, my foot's hurting! <laughs> he said, I can't believe it! I can't believe it! So he couldn't believe that he then thought about something in the future coming up or reflecting on the past that was upsetting and he couldn't control, tripped his pain. That example two, we did, I can't, we calmed it down again. He said, I can't believe it. I said, I thought, let's do one more. He said, think of someone who does your head in. He said, he said oh, I've got one. I said, who is it? He said, someone I go to the club with. I go to the club and uh, they spend all the time on the, in the club on the phone. Don't say a word. Barely joining conversation. Just on this damn phone. Does my head in. Oh, my foot. My foot. And he, he complains of the foot pain immediately as he thinks of that, of that situation. So it's a situation of frustration. It probably has a situation of fear. It probably has a situation of anger or resentment. And which pain appears just after those events? Coincidence, maybe. Yeah, maybe, but I doubt it. It's an invisible neurochemical surge through the system. If you don't listen to warning, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or nine, number 10 comes, and it comes like it's out of thin air. You go looking for the meaning and attach it to the weather, or your height, or your age, or where the body hurts, and look for damage there. Believe a doctor told you you've got arthritis there, or it's this, or it's that. They're plucking things out the air as well with the greatest of respect, to believe in different paradigm. He shook his head, I can't believe it. I said, well, maybe you'll start to. And if you're open to it, you can sort the pain out. He can sort it, not me. He's got to see the triggers. He's got to see how he reacts. He's got to change his reactions beyond the half an hour he spends with me. And we laughed a little bit. And, you know, maybe it makes him think, maybe it doesn't. I'm quite happy to do whatever I've been doing, costs of the relationship we have. But maybe you start to see a change in his symptoms. And maybe that example helps you see a change in yours. I don't know if it does, but hey, hope these little stories make me laugh and maybe they'll make you laugh too.